Okay, for this video, we're just going to talk about um, a few of the gates that you need to know. Um, there will be a separate video for the exclusive OR gate after this one. Basically, um, up here you've got your truth tables for your gates. Okay, so the first thing you need to understand with your AND gate, the way you remember how this gate works, is you need to think about a circuit that would have two switches in series. So, um, if I ever just close um, one of my switches, so say, say I close this one here, and I leave the other one open, the signal's not going to get through. So this would be represented by a, a one and say a zero. So one is when the switch is closed, and zero is when it's opened, and vice versa. Um, and you can see on the truth table, if, I, if we look at our truth table over here, for our AND gate, you can see that if you've got a 1 and a 0, the output is a 0. Um, and you could also say to yourself, I'm going to make that a 0 and close this switch and make that a 1. So 0, 1. And the same same deal, 0, 1 would give me a 0. So once you start thinking about this AND gate, it's just two switches connected in series, you know that the only way your output is going to be a 1 is if both of your switches are closed and you've got a 1 and a 1 and therefore the 1 gets out the end here. Otherwise, you're always going to get a 0 because the... Um, Signal can't travel through. That's the way you need to think about it. So if you think um, also that I need to have one and one, um, that might help also. One and one. Otherwise, any other condition um, where a zero is at one of the inputs, you're going to have a zero at the output. So for an and gate, you need one and one to make a one at the output. So that's your and gate. And I'll just rub out all of this. So AND gate is a series of switches. And if there's more than one input to the gate, obviously you'd have more than one switch. Now our OR gate, um, if you can think about it this way, might be also helpful. Our OR gate is one OR, the other, to make the output ON. So you think of it as some um, switches that are in parallel. So, this would be represented by a 0, 0, and you can see that both switches are open, so the output 0. But, as soon as, on my OR gate here, as soon as I close, and you can look at the truth table here, 0, 0 gives me a 0. So, that works, doesn't it? If I was to close one of these switches, that 1 is going to get through to the output, isn't it? Even if the other one's open, unlike the AND gate, where they both need to be shut, because it's a series circuit. So once I've got a 1 happening, you can see in this truth table, as soon as I've got 1 happening, I get 1's happening. Okay, And we also obviously um, could close, um, uh, close uh, this switch up and open this one up. It wouldn't matter. As long as one of the switches is closed, you get a 1. And finally, if you close both of those switches, you also get a 1. Okay, So the way to think of a normal OR gate is one or the other. Um, and also both gates can be shut. And later on we'll talk about the exclusive OR gate where it's a true OR gate. It's either one or the other. But that's that's how the exclusive OR gates work. So we won't talk about that for the moment. So if you think about that normal OR gate as a parallel, um, two parallel switches, um, and, you, and you have that picture in mind, you will always uh, understand how your OR gate works. And you won't really need to think about it. Okay, you'll just need to remember um, that picture in your head and say, okay, if one of the switches is shut, if I get a 1 here, I'm going to get a 1 here. Okay, if I get a 1 here, I'm going to get a 1 here. As long as there's a 1 coming in, I'm going to get a 1 coming out. With the AND gate, they both have to 1 and 1 to make a 1. As soon as I get a 0, that's going to be a 0. Any zeros happening at the input, I'll get a 0 at the output. So any zeros at the input of the AND gate gives me a 0 at the output. Any... Um, any ones at the input of the OR gate will give me a one at the output. I don't need to have more than one input. So um, just remember, series switches for the AND gate and for the OR gate, parallel um, switches. Okay. 
So either switch can be on. If you remember that, you're 90% um, of the way to understanding all your gates. The only other thing you've got to remember is you've suddenly got this other gate that will appear on your on your truth tables, and that is um, the dreaded um, NOR gate, and you can tell it's a NOR gate because it's got that little circle at the output, or the NAND gate, okay, which is just like an AND gate. But once again, it's got that little circle. Now that little circle, all that is, is a, an inverter or a NOT gate. Okay, and the NOT gate looks like that. And the, the way that works, all that happens is if I've got a zero coming in here, it becomes a one at the output. It inverts the output. If I've got a, a one coming at the input, it becomes a zero at the output. Now, um, I find the easiest way to remember the truth tables for these devices is just to treat them just like it's an OR gate or an AND gate. And once I arrive at what my output will be, um, if I say, okay, I'm going to say it's an OR gate and I put one coming in, I know that as long as I've got at least one of those inputs going to one, my OR gate would be a one. But then I have to just say to myself, because it's a NOR gate, that one is flipped into a zero. So you just got to flip it. So you could take these truth tables here and you could extend them out um, and say to yourself, okay, um, if this was going to be a um, NAND gate table, any zero outputs become, so this could be the X um, for the NAND gate. If I turn this into a NAND gate, the the output would become a 1 if it's a 0, that's going to be a 1 because it's a 0, that's going to be a 1 because it's a 0, and this, because it's a 1, will be a 0. So you just invert your outputs. And our NOR gate, if I wanted to turn this into a, um, so that's an AND, if I wanted to turn that into a NOR gate, I just take my output for my OR gate, and I flip it. So zeros will become 1s, and 1s will become zeros. So um, that is the best way to think about it, because then you, if, if once you know how your AND gate works and your OR gate works and your inverter or NOT gate works, you um, only need to remember this and this to remember what a NAND and a NOR does. Um, so that might be a helpful way of not having to s so much to remember. Once you know what's happening up to this point when it's an OR gate, just flip your answer and it'll be correct. Hopefully that's um, helpful in, in the process of understanding how these gates work. Um, I think the switch analogy is a good one because you don't have to remember complex um, tables, uh, truth tables. You don't have to remember whether it's on or off. You just have to say to yourself, my AND gate is series switches, my OR gate is parallel switches. My AND gate, I have to have one and one to make it come on. My OR gate, one or the other, or both of them, okay? Um, that is probably the easiest way to remember how this all works. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, you can comment, send me a message about it if it's not. Um, thank you.